How's it going everyone? In this video I'll discuss truth tree decomposition rules. So first off, what is a decomposition rule? Well, in propositional logic truth trees, a decomposition rule is just a graphical way to display the conditions under which a complex well-formed formula or a proposition that's decomposable is true. So what the decomposition rule does is it sort of gives us a visual display of the conditions under which a well-formed formula is true. And it does this by making use of simpler formulas such that if those formulas were true, it would make the complex well-formed formula true. Just a bit of vocabulary, specific types of complex well-formed formulas are said to be decomposed, and they're decomposed using decomposition rules. There are nine different decomposition rules, and each one of these is going to correspond to a specific type of decomposable proposition. One thing to note is that each one of these decomposable propositions will have its own exclusive decomposition rule. So for example, conjunctions, which will, as we'll see, is a specific type of decomposable proposition, can only be decomposed using its specific decomposition rule which is conjunction decomposition. Similarly, disjunctions can only be decomposed using disjunction decomposition. So let's take a look at all of the decomposition rules. So let's take a look at all of the proposition types that can be decomposed, their corresponding well-formed formula, and the decomposition rule. Notice that there are nine proposition types that can be decomposed. These are the conjunction, disjunction, conditional, and biconditional and the negated form of each, the negated conjunction, the negated disjunction, and so forth. And lastly, there is the double negated well-formed formula. In the far right column, there is an abbreviation for the decomposition rule that would decompose the corresponding formula. So a conjunction of formula of P wedge Q will, decompose, will be decomposed using the decomposition rule wedge D which is an abbreviation for conjunction decomposition. So while there are nine different proposition types and there is a corresponding decomposition rule for each one, essentially there are three main kinds of decomposition rules. That is three main ways to display the conditions under which a decomposable proposition is true. There are stacking decomposition rules, branching decomposition rules, and branching and stacking decomposition rules. So let's take a look at an example of each in a really sort of abstract or general form. So when decomposing a decomposable proposition, and let's just call it P, but P could be any well-formed formula, a stacking rule will represent that there is one condition under which P is true. So if we had some random formula, let's say it's P hash Q, a stacking rule would stack formulas underneath P hash Q in order to represent the conditions under which that formula is true. So what this example illustrates is that P hash Q is true if and only if P is true and Q is true. A branching rule represents that there are three conditions in which the proposition P is true. So if we had a formula P hash Q, the sort of branching graphical display illustrates that P hash Q is true if and only if either P is true or Q is true. Lastly, a branching and stacking rule represents that there are two conditions in which P is true. Now, essentially this is just a combination of the branching and stacking rule, but so if we take a look at the example P hash Q, what we see is that P hash Q is true if either P is true and Q is true, or if not P is true and not Q is true. So let's look at some examples of specific decomposable proposition types and their corresponding decomposition rule. Now a conjunction is true if and only if both P and Q is true. That is, both of its conjuncts are true. And so we will stack the conjuncts. That is, we want to illustrate that this conjunction is true provided P is true and Q is true. And so we'll use our stacking procedure in order to do this. A disjunction is true if and only if either P is true or Q is true or both. So this gives us three different possible scenarios. 
And so we'll make use of the branching rule. That is a disjunction of the form P V Q is true if P is true, or if Q is true, or if they're both true. A negated disjunction, by contrast, is true if and only if not P is true and not Q is true. So this gives us one scenario under which the negated disjunction not P V Q is true. That is not P V Q is true if and only if not P is true and not Q is true. So the negated disjunction decomposition rule is a stacking rule. A negated conjunction by contrast is true if and only if either negation P is true or negation Q is true. Since there are three scenarios under which the negated conjunction is true, we'll make use of a branching rule. And so we'll illustrate not P wedge Q as being true if either not P is true or not Q is true. And the branching scenario suggests that both of these can also be the case. A conditional is true if and only if either not P is true or Q is true. And so this gives us three possible scenarios under which a conditional can be true. If either not P is true or Q is true or they're both true. And so we can represent this using a branching rule. That is P right arrow Q is true if and only if either not P is true or Q is true or both. A negated conditional is true if and only if not P is true and a negated conditional is true if and only if P is true and not Q is true. And so this gives us one scenario under which a negated conditional can be true. That is when P is the case and not Q is the case. And so we stack the propositions underneath the negated conditional in order to indicate the conditions under which it's true. A biconditional is true if and only if P and Q are both true or not P and not Q are true. So this gives us two scenarios under which a biconditional can be true. It's true if and only if either P and Q are true or not P and not Q is true. A negated biconditional of the form not P double arrow Q is true if and only if P and not Q are both true or not P and Q are true. So we can express the conditions under which a negated biconditional is true by both branching and stacking. That is, on one side of the branch we write P and not Q. On the other side of the branch we stack not P and Q. Finally, a negated well-formed formula not not P is true if and only if P is true. So this gives us one condition under which the negated well-formed formula is true and so we can stack. We can simply write P all right, ladies and gentlemen, this has been another video on the language of propositional logic. Like the video if you thought it was helpful and subscribe if you're interested in seeing more videos on topics in logic. 